Alrighty, y'all, welcome back to another tutorial. And in this one, we're gonna be talking about Loopering IO. So Loopering IO is Loopering's own DEX. It's their own decentralized exchange built on top of their own Loopering protocol. Now, in layman's terms, this is an app that lets users trade secure, fast, and cheap. Now, before we just hop right into it, I do wanna point out a couple prerequisites that we're gonna to need to get started. So first of all, if you don't already, I'm guessing like 99% of you probably do, but if you don't, go ahead and download MetaMask. And if you need any help with this, then check out my Ethereum tutorial series where I make a tutorial going over all the features that we're gonna need for MetaMask. But either way, make sure you have this. And also you are going to need some Ethereum because we're essentially gonna be sending this to Looperings Layer 2 DEX, this app right here, so we can trade with it. So once you have those two, we can now go ahead and click this launch app button. So this is gonna take us to the user interface. However, before we can do anything, the first thing that we need to do is connect our wallet. And what this means is basically just allowing MetaMask to interact with the website. So yes, read all the terms and services and click MetaMask. All right, so that was pretty easy. Got a little confirmation that it's connected right there. So either way, next thing that we need to do is we need to click this button, deposit and activate layer two. However, before we go through this, I do wanna give you all a very brief overview of what's going on, just so everyone isn't really like blindly following along, got a little better understanding of what's happening here. So either way, right now, and let me pop this back open, right now, all of my life savings, this 0 0.0337 ether, is on layer one Ethereum's mainnet. So let's pop this back open and check it out. So here's my account and all of my ether, like I said, is on layer one. Now we need to get this over to Loopring's layer two DEX so that I can trade with it. And we need to do this because remember this layer two protocol is essentially like a separate system that exists outside the main Ethereum network. So at this point in time, if I were to ask Ethereum, what's my balance, it would say this. And if I were to ask Loopring, what's my balance? Loopring would say, um, wait, who are you? I have never heard of you before. So not only do we not have any balance, but Loopring doesn't even have any idea that I intend to trade on their platform at all. So whenever we go through that process of depositing and activating layer two, essentially what we're gonna be doing is creating an account on Loopring so that we can trade. And technically for anyone out there, what's happening behind the scenes is that this contract right here is receiving your assets and mapping them to a slot in the Merkle tree, which you control. However, that's not really important for this uh, end user facing tutorial, but I just want to point that out if anyone out there is a little bit more technical. So go ahead and click this now, now that we understand what's going on and just go ahead and click deposit. And I have 0 0.03 available. So let me send 0 0.0. All right, it's not let me type in point zero. All right, so it, hmm, okay, maybe some UI issues here, but either way, I needed to type in the three, the three first and then uh, go ahead and put the zero right there. But either way, go ahead and uh, type in however many ether you wanna transfer over to layer two. Now, another thing that I wanna point out is that since depositing is a layer one transaction, it is going to cost a normal gas fee. So just go ahead and make sure you leave some ether for the gas and now go ahead and click deposit. And once we have MetaMask open to sign our transaction, wow. <laughs> All right, so gas fees are uh, pretty expensive right now. Uh, let's see, estimated gas is 18 bucks. Wow, this is pretty ridiculous. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, retry this process and I'm gonna do it with 0.2. And this actually highlights the need for tra trading on layer two, even though I'm gonna have to pay a little extra gas here. But either way, click deposit and we'll see if it works this time. All right, have enough. So go ahead and confirm this. Deposit submitted, fantastic. So once we deposited our funds, the last thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to go up here where it says L2 wallet and then go ahead and click activate layer two, activate account and activate account. And once you do, MetaMask is gonna pop open. You do need to sign another transaction, pretty much authorizing your account activation. Go ahead and sign and send that. And there you go. 
All right, fantastic. So it looks like our funds have been deposited and account activated. In other words, account created on layer two, and we are now ready to trade. All right, and I did go ahead and deposit some more funds just to make sure that I have enough to cover all of the features that we wanna go over. But either way, now that we're loaded up, go ahead and up in the top menu, click trade and then simple. And you're gonna be taken to this UI. And this is actually the first UI that we saw whenever we click launch app. However, now we're all loaded up. Everything is good to go, ready to start trading. So what I wanna do is actually trade some of my Ethereum and get some loopering. So I'm gonna say from Ethereum, I wanna trade that for loopering and how much well, I have 0.078 available. So let's say about half of it. So I'll say I'm gonna trade 0.04 of my ether for loop ring, gonna get about 142. Now, if this looks good, just hit swap. All right, so that was pretty quick. And apparently I have some loop ring now. And just to verify, if you go back to your L2 wallet, and you can now see, since by default, this takes you to your assets uh, tab, whatever you want to call it. So if you scroll down, you can see that, okay, I now have um, this amount of ether. Remember I spent 0 0.04 on loop ring and I now have 142 loop ring, fantastic. And also another thing I want to point out is that if you ever just want to see your order history, then on the left right here, if you click on orders, and then order history right here, you can see that this order was basically just uh, me trading Ethereum for loop ring. But either way, just wanna point out that this is where your order history is. Now, another feature that I wanna go over are these automated market maker pools. And quick disclaimer, I didn't wanna make this a tutorial about automated market makers. However, some of the features that I do wanna go over are a bit difficult to understand without a very basic understanding of what an automated market maker is. So what we're gonna be doing is taking about 30 seconds and figuring that out. And more simply, what we're gonna be figuring out is whenever we just made that trade from Ethereum to Loopring, we're gonna be figuring out how Loopring IO decided on this exchange rate right here. For example, whenever we trade this much Ethereum for Loopring, how does it know to give us 138? Why not 150 Loopring? why not 130? So where does this exchange rate come from? Well, check it out. So behind the scenes, and by behind the scenes, I mean abstracted away in a smart contract somewhere, but behind the scenes, Loopring controls two big pools of assets. And in this case, we're gonna be taking a look at the Ethereum pool and also the Loopring pool. Now in short, the amount of assets in each one of these pools determines the supply and demand. And by that, I mean the less of something there is, the greater the price. So whenever we traded our Ethereum for loop ring, what we were essentially doing is saying, yes, there is some Ethereum in my account. I don't want it anymore, or not that you don't want it, just that you're trading it for something else. So I'm gonna take that Ethereum, it's gonna leave my account, and it's gonna go into this Ethereum pool. So now this Ethereum pool now has more Ethereum in it. And in exchange for that, what we did is we said what we want in return is loopering. So from this loopering pool, we actually removed some loopering for that. So as a result of this trade, there is now less loopering, or in other words, a lower supply in this pool. And therefore, for the next user who makes this trade, the price of loopering is going to go up for them. And of course, it's a bit more complicated than that. There are lots of fancy algorithms and formulas involved, but the point is, for this trading system to work, we rely on a pool of both of these assets and these assets come from users. So now the question is, why would a user ever want to lock up their assets into a Loopring DEX? Well, in exchange for allowing Loopring IO to use those assets, liquidity providers, in other words, the people who allow Loopring to use their assets, they earn fees from the trades in those pools that they provide liquidity to. Now, if all of this sounds overly complicated, then it could all be summed up in short to say, you can let Loopring IO borrow your assets and you can earn fees from it. That's really all that's happening here. So how does this work? Well, if you click on this pools tab right here, you're gonna be taken to a list of these automated market maker pools and you can essentially just decide which one you wanna to contribute to. So 
To become a liquidity provider, what you need to do is you need to deposit an equal value of both assets to these pools. So let's say I want to contribute to this liquidity pool where Loopring and Ethereum is being exchanged. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click add right here and you are gonna be taking to this page where you can add liquidity to the pool. So like I said, you need to add an equal amount of Loopring and Ethereum, an equal amount of both assets. And the reason for that is because if you would only add one, then it would actually um, kind of adjust the price and that's not what we're trying to do. Just add some more liquidity for the trading system to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and add 200 Loopring and at the current exchange rate, that's this much Ethereum. And just go ahead and hit add liquidity. All right, look like it worked. So what just happened is we took some of our Loopring and some of our Ethereum and we essentially let Loopring IO hold on to it or borrow it. Now, in exchange for that, what we received is something called an LP token or a liquidity provider token. It says liquidity token right here. It, it all means the same thing. So this liquidity token is more or less like our IOU or our receipt for those coins. And what we can do is we can actually, if we ever want to um, kind of return this and get our uh, tokens back, in other words, get our loop ring and Ethereum back, then we can essentially convert this token for these two assets. So of course you can see your balance of your liquidity token here. And also if you go to L2 wallet and click on my liquidity on the left, then you can also see your total position value and also the fee rewards earned from providing liquidity right here. Now, if you ever want to remove it from the pool, then you can go ahead and click this. And by the way, just a heads up, if you want to get there from this UI, then if you just go back here and click this little tab right at the top, then it's going to take you to the same place. But this is how you would essentially do the opposite of that transaction where you're taking your liquidity tokens in redeeming them back for that loop ring in Ethereum. So you pretty simple UI, you pretty much just say what percentage do you want to redeem? And we'll just say 50% and just say remove liquidity. And again, what this does is it converts those liquidity tokens and we should now have received loop ring and Ethereum. And if we go back to our L2 wallet and look at liquidity, yes, it looks like it did go down and all right, there are our two assets. We actually have three assets, our Loopring, Ethereum, and that this is that LP or liquidity provider token as well. Now there are two other things that I just wanna to touch on real quick before I let you guys go. And the first one is just using the order book. Now I will mention this, that this simple interface, it is more than just the interface. This trading system is using an automated market maker, and we just talked about all that. This professional uh, order book model, this is not using the automated market maker. This is your typical order book. This is gonna allow you to place limit trades or market trades. Limit trades, of course, being basically a trade where you say, this is the price that I wanna trade for, and you kinda wait and see if someone else is gonna come along and take the other side of that trade. Market trade is basically a simple trade saying, whatever the price, the current price is, then I'll just trade for that price right now. But either way, just wanna point out that there are some more professional tools for the more experienced traders. And the last thing that I wanted to cover in this tutorial is just how to take those funds from this layer two wallet and move them back to layer one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click withdraw right here, and it's gonna ask for an Ethereum address and by the way, this address, it doesn't have to be the same one where you deposited those funds from. This can be an entirely new Ethereum account. It can, you know, uh, it doesn't even have to be known by Loopring at all. You can essentially put any layer one Ethereum address in here and you're gonna be able to deposit to that. So just to verify that everything is working, let's go ahead and withdraw, uh, we'll say 05. And what is my MetaMask account? All right, so take note here, I currently have 0 0.0161 in my Ethereum wallet. And all right, that looks good. Are you sure you wanna withdraw? If so, just go ahead and sign this. All right, looks good. All right, so that was pretty easy. 
And after somewhere between five and 30 minutes, you should see those funds appear back in your main layer one wallet. So yes, withdrawals do take a little bit of time and that is because we are required to interact with layer one. However, I mean, hey, that's why we love layer two, right? So on that note, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see y'all in the next video.